Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. Two of my really good friends, colleagues, Dr. Jim Burns and Dr. Jill Hubbard are here. Hello to both of you. Hello, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi, Jim. Yeah. Jill, I love getting to hang out with you here. Yeah, We're sitting we, here. we have fun. Yeah. Learning all kinds of things. We do have fun. This morning, I was listening to James, not our son James, but the book of James <laughs> on uh-huh. audio, and... James 1, five came up, if any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. It's a great, uh, wonderful verse mm-hmm. with a wonderful promise, and I hope and pray that everything that we do here is, mm-hmm. is reflective of God's truth and the wisdom that comes, it comes from above, not uh, from below or somewhere else. And I love getting to do this uh, for so many years, sitting here with some of the wisest people ever. And that wisdom might be something you could benefit from. For instance, a lot of people want to improve relationships with adult sons and daughters. Well, one thing they can do is send Jill's book, Forgiving Our Fathers and Mothers. That would help improve the relationship, maybe. Mm-hmm. But what uh, you know, Jim has done doing life with our adult uh, children, what is something that somebody listening right now could do and it would perhaps improve the relationship with a child that is an adult and doesn't particularly like connecting with parents as an adult? What do you think? Well, one suggestion I'd say is I have a principle that says, unsolicited advice is usually taken as criticism. And parents don't understand that because they have right motives. They love their kids. They're trying to help their kids. But what they don't understand is that their children are are thinking, but you don't trust me to be an adult. So I think we actually have to ask permission to give them an input. And then if they say, I'm not really ready for that, don't give them the input yet. And that goes against our grain because we parented for two decades one way and now we have to change it. Mm -hmm. But unsolicited advice is usually taken as criticism. Parents don't understand that. Sometimes even when you're trying to compliment your child, they take it as criticism. (laughs) Absolutely. And I have had to say... What did you just hear? Yeah, because right. oh. I'm trying to compliment you, and yeah. oh, that was one of my daughters this weekend. That's, I said, that I was love. Me too. I said, I love your hair, and she goes, No, you don't. I go, No, honestly, I love your hair. She goes, No, you don't. You liked it better before, probably, because guys don't like it shorter or whatever. I'm like, Wait, I, all I wanted to say was, I like your hair, and you know. Anyway, yeah, and it so is funny. interesting the subtle messages just something uh-huh. so positive as noticing something right, right. good and pointing out. Because parents notice. And so <laughs> you're just trying to be positive adult to adult, but they exactly. feel it as parent to little baby tiny child. And right. so we, we have to, it's tricky. And so one thing is to just analyze a little bit past interactions that mm. have been yeah. problematic. And next time Jim sees his daughter's hair, he might want to say, man, that is that's sick. That, I can't even believe you're going out of the house like that. No, but no, really, sick is if, good now with millennials. Yeah, they right. like that word. So but, but I if, have to say, if, is that good or is that if bad? Something, <laughs> if something has produced a thing, why go back and do it again? The other thing that's hard for parents to give up are teachable moments. Uh. You, you have to surrender those things it's with hard. your adult children. All right, we are taking a break, and then we're going to come back. But you could join us for more insight on this at our Courageous Parenting on Adult Sons and Daughters. And it's April the 1st with Jim Burns. Six teaching sessions, 4.5 hours in small groups. So it's not just listening, but it's doing. It's going to be very helpful. I hope you'll join us for that. We'll take a break and come right back with more of New Life Live. I'm 33 pounds. How long have you weighed that much? I've probably been over 300 at least 15, 20 years. 
I'm 39. I feel like I've just been a failure in every area of my life. Does this sound like your story? It doesn't have to. If you want to live free of obsessions and compulsions in your eating habits, New Life's Lose It For Life online workshop can help. This online workshop features a one-day Zoom session presented by Steve Arterburn on Saturday, March 18th, plus breakout sessions led by a credentialed New Life Network counselor. Fitness expert Michelle Spadafora will lead exercise sessions, plus you'll receive exercise gear to allow you to start a home fitness routine you'll actually enjoy. If you're finally ready to stop going from diet to diet and begin a comprehensive plan that addresses the psychological, emotional, and spiritual aspects of a healthy lifestyle, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We, we are back. And uh, the good news about uh, making a parenting mistake or two is you're not mm. alone. That's also yeah. the bad news. It's common, and we can yep. lower it if you'll come to this workshop. I think, I think it's going to help you. It really is the way to change the trajectory of any area of your life, whether it's uh, Every Man's Battle on February 4th or Intimacy and Marriage, February 17th. Last time, Milan and Kay will be doing that, and so it would really be the great time to go. If you ever thought that would be helpful, I think, well, do it this time in February. Lose It for Life is online March the 18th and Courageous Parenting April the 1st. Right now... Uh, we're going to go back to, or we're going to go to our phones, and uh, I'm thinking, how about uh, we talk with Mary, Austin, Texas, listens online. Hello, Mary. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I want to thank all of you for all you do to help people out in different situations, and thank God most of all for what he's done for me in the last six years. Um, I have anxiety like that woman spoke in the past. And the other show and mine is not as bad because I got therapy but I've got good coping skills so the reason I'm here and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it is because I'm always open to more ideas to what I'm going through right now okay yeah what are you going um, through I have a husband yeah my husband has intimacy issues uh, he was never married till he was 50 he had a lot of trauma growing up and did drugs and everything and of course he married me Sandra D straight as an arrow mm. not put him into sobriety believe it or not he refused to get counseling, he refused to get rehab, but then he turned to the grumpy old man. He's 64. Um, I deal with him, you know, as God would want me to do, patiently, and as God tells us that we sometimes can have our spouses convicted through, through us as a Christian as being an example to our spouses, right? Um, but at the same time, it makes me feel very unloved by him. I ask and I pray, Jesus, you know, please help me with this every day, and I'm still being patient about it. Um, he, you know, doesn't take initiative. He was diagnosed with that, what the veteran, Vietnam veterans get when they come back, that PSCD, how, 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 PTSD. You know. PTSD. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So he holds everything and then he explodes. Um, he, he's been working with it, you know, uh, much better than he has. We've been together for 13 years because I, I always make him accountable for it, okay? I don't do the codependency card. Okay, so tell us most, tell us how we could help you or what you were hoping. Well, that's, could... what that, that's what I'm calling for based okay. on what I'm telling you. Okay. So I, I went ahead and, you know, I thought, well, I'm thinking to take baby steps for intimacy, baby steps, which means maybe we'll go to the movies, you know, and, and he decided to do that or go to dinner, and he decided to do that, but he doesn't take any intimacy to be close to me or anything, and I did share it with him. But he was in a, he was at a he doesn't he's not verbal he's very introverted okay, but you know everybody copes differently so I'm thinking what else can I do, I mean he does a lot he's a hardworking man, um, he he shows me his love by what he does but I don't feel loved, yeah, and I know okay. it's in me to feel loved sure. because I I know I don't want to personalize and say hey listen you can't count on him to feel loved you have to feel loved because God tells us he loves us am I right for thinking that right. Um, well, and but it's still well, a struggle. Okay, so what would the specific question be, just so we help you in the right area? What What well, do you? Okay, what? Well, based on what I'm sharing, like, do you think I'm doing the right thing? I'm taking the baby steps and I'm pushing him. He's very sensitive to criticism. Okay, so I yeah. try not to do it. Like, you know, even last week, I 
I'd say, you know, I, this is interesting, but can you see any, tell me anything that you love about me? He couldn't come up with anything. Okay. And he looked at me and he said, what do you think I, what do you think I am, your therapist? Okay. And, uh, that's um, pretty rough. Okay. So, yeah, that's okay. pretty rough. And so, so let's, I looked at him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you looked at him and what'd you say? And so when I look at him, I just, you know, I have to take a deep breath and count. And as God tells us, he's yeah. um, slow to speak and quick to listen. Right. Okay. And so so let us let him. us give you some some help here, um, okay. because okay, go we've ahead. got you're going to get three perspectives on what might be helpful when the other person doesn't seem inspired or motivated to provide emotional support or connection, intimacy, all these things. He is not there for you. It's very complicated. Let's start with you, Jill. I mean, this is a tough one. It's a real tough one. Yeah, Mary, I, I'm sorry. And I, I, I think you're on the right track by taking some baby steps and doing things slowly and taking deep breaths and not getting reactive. So, but just for clarification, you're saying your husband can't do intimacy and you're talking about all kinds of intimacy, sexual intimacy, yes. emotional intimacy. Because he, because he let's stop right there, the sexual part, because he had cancer. So unfortunately that made him feel really, his low self-esteem really hit him hard after that. It didn't help. Okay. That was four years ago. Okay. Okay. And so, and have, and so you've had to be very understanding in that arena. So, in lieu of that, yes. have you shared with him that affirmations are a, a for yes. something that feeds you, right? Something yes. that yes. you yes. appreciate yes. and value, yes. and is a substitute. Yes. The emotional intimacy, right? You've yes. shared that with I, him. Yes, I have. Okay, and I he, have. He, he, yes. And he can't go <laughs> there. He doesn't. He, it's almost like he doesn't know how. I well, mean, I agree. Like he, I think he doesn't know how. That's why he maybe hasn't it, it, been married for such a, a long it, time. Perhaps. It, very, yeah. very much. I mean, interest, it's just interestingly enough, okay. there's now, two things that... Yeah. So, Hold so on, let because, me just say, uh, okay, on the I'm one sorry. hand, <laughs> I want what you said, you already have insight about this, that it for you to feel loved in general... You can't expect your husband to completely bolster that, right? Correct, so correct, you correct, have correct. to feel love from the Lord. You have to deal with your childhood yes. issues of where have I had yes. this feeling before, right? And now I'm expecting mm -hmm. my husband to step in. Okay, that being said, we do want to feel loved by our our spouses, our, our partners. So that isn't completely out of the question. And, but we have to look at also the way people love, right? Unfortunately, he's not, st he's not studying you and saying, how does she re receive love? He's giving love perhaps the way he experiences love, and that is by doing. And so I want you to look at yes. all the things he does yes. for you and write those yes. down that that equals love. So that you're not I, this I just, desperate trying to extract from him in a in a needy way and that he then uh, uh, rejects. And let me just jump yes. in here before I go to Jim. Now, you called because you wanted us to help you. But you've really had a hard time just listening to us. And mm -hmm. I have that same problem all the time. But I just want to point <laughs> out that... If he is quiet and uh, reserved and you mm -hmm. come at him consistently wanting a conversation or wanting to tell him everything mm -hmm. that's on your mind, mm -hmm. then he mm -hmm. might develop a bit of resistance to anything that mm -hmm. you're saying. Correct. And so yes. one, one thing you might want to do is set a goal of sitting down, watching the television, whatever he's watching, and just being present with him without talking, yes. without asking. And that, if yes. you want a baby step, that's a baby step. Yes. 
saying that's correct. you know what what do you like about me or anything that's not a baby step for a guy like him it sounds like that's a big old giant step but i and i like the baby step thing right. <laughs> okay so you're absolutely it, right has no, he the, told the, you that well let me share let me share because it's funny you should say this <laughs> um you know i <laughs> I know <laughs> there may be a small correlation here. I worked in special ed in middle school with kids, okay? <laughs> Maybe or not, but okay, it just helps a tad bit. Mm-hmm. And plus, I do listen to scripture and, and read and think about what God wants me to do first, okay? He says, be patient, be kind, be loving, over and over, okay? So what I did here, and this happened about six months ago, we're not even in the same rooms together, okay, when we sleep at night because he has office shifts. Let's, let me get to the role of it real forward. That, I'm going to get evasive, right? To what so you were, you were going to tell me a little thing so I here. Went, so I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to tell you because it, it goes right in point to what you mentioned. So he watched his television in his room. And I said, would you mind if I watched a movie with you? So I started that before the big movies and going to the movie theater. That's baby, baby steps, okay? And we sat there and watched the movies, and all I focused was on what he loves. There's new, you know, National Geographic shows, whatever. Oh, this is great. Didn't mention it. Didn't mention the movie was over. And he said after this, he said, thank you. I really appreciate you watching this with me, which was a big forward step for him. Great. Okay. Okay. And said, okay. Can we just freeze that for a second, Mary? Because I think Steve is really on to something with you. It's like people who want to preach about Jesus and hit people over the head versus just being Jesus to them. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I'm trying to practice because it's very mm-hmm. annoying those people that push it. You can't that you can drag a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. But philosophy. someone who's introverted and male. And the amount of mm. talking that you are able to put into a small space, it's too much yeah. for him. I you know, have to slow your talking down and do much less of it. And I know that's going to be frustrating for you, but no. do not fill all the space with your words. It's too much for him. True. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. the first Jim, one what are, to let's, hear from, let's, <laughs> let's hear from Jim and what he's thinking okay, through Jim, all of here. this. Well, I was thinking of a phrase, um, sounds like he needs a cheerleader and not a coach. And a lot of times I think in marriage, he, and he's making some poor choices on intimacy. I mean, totally, sure. I totally agree with you. But you're probably not the, the coach because he needs a cheerleader. He, needs, he doesn't want you to parent him. He wants you to be his, you know, wife. And, and even in terms of the, the true. lover side, true. his true. love so language, true. You, you just described his love language. And it's going to be different than yes. yours. Your love language may yes. be those words of affirmation. You're not getting them. I totally get that. He's going to have to learn to do that. And he can't. But his love language is you being present with him watching that movie. Because he even thanked you. I mean, that was tender. Yeah. That was yeah. that's a yeah. part of intimacy. You know, intimacy means connection. And he mm-hmm. and in his way, he connected with you. So I would focus on yes. finding his love languages and and yeah. be present there. Now again, he needs to be able to at times give you your love language. I totally get that. But you don't want to. You have a lot on your mind, and you have a. Actually, you can tell you've had some counsel in, uh, from people, mm-hmm. so you you know what to do. He he probably doesn't know as as well, or is, no. isn't articulate. But you can't coach him. You got to cheerlead him. Okay, and Jim, I think that's one of the best things ever mm-hmm. said. Is that we we go from well, I'm not going to parent this person. I'm not going to be the mother, but I I'm going to coach them. No, don't do that. Be the cheerleader. Be the cheerleader because coaching is parenting mm-hmm. or caretaking or whatever it is. So I, I really love what you said there, and we'll put it down in our uh, folder of smart things <laughs> said by smart people. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to send her a copy of Jill's book, The Secrets That Women Keep, and I'm going to send her the new book, Every Believer's Thought Life, because I think it, you know, it, if we our thoughts are coming at us at 60 miles an hour, I think this book can help you get it down to about 45 miles an hour. It can do that with practice even more. So I'm really glad that she called, and I, I think that speaks to a lot of people. Now, let's go over here to Jane. Jane's calling from Philadelphia, WFIL is that station. Hello, Jane. How are you today? Hello. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? Doing all right. You you sound down. Is that true? 
Yeah, I am. Um, I guess I should not be. I um, I heard your previous show on clutter. Yeah. When you were talking about it, and that's what made me call in. I didn't know if you were talking about that exclusively or just. No, we we talk about it anytime. It. You can talk about anything anytime. Is that something you struggle yeah, with? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that. You can hear the music. Uh, you can join us, 1-800-229-3000. And uh, maybe you don't know, but you can watch us on the New Life Live YouTube channel. There's an app. You can listen to us on the app. You can go to newlife.com and you can listen there. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast that we turn the radio show into. Many ways to hear, listen, and be with us. We'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Steve Arterman from New Life Live, and Chris Williams and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workshop. I don't know of anybody that wouldn't benefit from emotional freedom. We're all bound or stuck or struggling in some area. What are we going to do there, Chris? Just really help people get clarity around the places where they're stuck in their life. They sort of circle the same mountain of disappointment over and over and over again. You're going to be able to see that mountain clearly and get to a new place of what we call emotional freedom, which is simply, I can feel in the world, build a relationship to it, and know what to do with my experiences. The New Life Emotional Freedom Online Workshop is Saturday, January 21st. Steve Arterburn, Chris Williams, and Dr. Jackie Mac Harris will present information on trauma, depression, codependency, and more. And small group leaders will help you process the information you learn. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or register online at newlife.com. Chris Williams on Coaching. Oftentimes I get asked, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? The biggest difference between the two is that a therapist is going to be looking for a diagnosable mental health condition, whereas a coach is going to look at a particular issue and help a person work through that. If you need a coach, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. If you're looking at an issue in your life that you just kind of want to change, whether it be your weight or leadership or other areas of behavioral patterns, check out coaching. There can be some really, really helpful things for you. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 and talk to us about getting a new life coach. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back and love the fact that you're back with us. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear my voice right now. (laughs) If you decide right now to give a gift to New Life, and boy, could we ever use it. We love it. It helps us help others. We're going to do something for you. We'll send you a gift of any amount, every believer's thought life and it will help you get rid of will see and get rid of those patterns that you have or the triggers that trigger you into thinking and uh, there's some really wise stuff in there for instance this morning you know what i thought god not me god with me others over me Hmm. now if you say that a few times you're really experiencing and inviting God to be with you, and you're acknowledging that God is with you, and it starts to change your thought life if you start the day like that. Anyway, I hope and pray you could help us, and we'll send you this book that could be one of the best books you've ever read or not. So uh, I I hope you'll get it. I, I really have had great, great feedback from this book. Okay, so... Um, we were, Jane. let's see, we were talking to Jane from Philadelphia. Okay, so Jane, uh, you were saying you're a hoarder. Well, yeah, that's what they say. I don't like the word hoarder. I like the word maybe clutter. I've been in a um, support group to a 
social service agency in Philadelphia on the book Buried in Treasures okay. um, on this subject. And I wondered, I mean, are there, uh, you know, well, I have a therapist who's a Christian. I call my problem sin and idolatry. She says it's a disorder. And I have other people look at me like they don't understand me using the word sin. But mm-hmm. it's a way of, what, coping with life and not leaning on God and not getting to whatever the deeper issues are behind it? Well, I mean, I just me... had a, okay. a milestone birthday. I just turned 60. And okay. I have been dealing with this problem since I was 20-something, but it's only gotten worse. All right. I've had help, so, I plead for help, and I keep going back to it, and I need to stop it. Okay, let me ask it, you this, if you, could, if you could just let me ask you a quick question. At the beginning yeah. of that program that you heard, um, Jill said sometimes you get stuck in an area of your life that you don't think was fully lived out. Uh, sometimes you just can't get enough of things around you to be comfortable other times um you you can't let go of things you just have that difficult time i'm wondering if you just off the top of your head said here's what this does for me or here's why i do it can you identify that i'm not really totally sure i mean i've had people tell me it has to do with trauma in your life and I lived in an abusive relationship. I mean, you know, I ended up going to a battered women's shelter and all that. Mm, I mean, so sorry. there's childhood. Well, yeah, well, being in the shelter was, I wasn't with any believers, but it was actually, it was a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, I just turned, I just turned 60, and that's when I was maybe 28 going, maybe 29 or 30. But it was actually a good experience. Staying there. Um, okay. Well, here, let, let I, me ask Jill so, uh, to give you some so Jane, help here. Steve just asked you if you could identify why you do this. And so you did bring up the trauma piece, which I think is a really important piece. But it's important yeah. to get to the feelings around this. Like if you were not to hold on to things, what feelings would come up? And so with your therapist, um, and I, I'm wondering if she is digging in to your trauma or to your childhood issues or to your feelings versus more of a coach that might help you figure out how to get rid of the stuff. So are, um, are you getting into the feelings? Because without doing that, just getting rid of the stuff isn't going to help you. Like you said, you go back to it. Why do you go back to it? Because it brings you comfort and relief at some level. There's something you gain from it. Well, I mean, a friend of mine tells me I'm an addict, and I guess I am. I'm just not a drinker. I don't use drugs or alcohol. But You use stuff. To buy stuff. Yeah. Are you buying stuff, or is it stuff you're saving? Both. Okay. But I'm not doing. I'm not saving usually like crazy things like you see on Oprah, like people saving like egg crates. You don't and save trash. Like well, you know, it, there is no, something I mean, I, I to have... buying. There is something to mm-hmm. people that hoard. They buy things because when you go into a store and you're purchasing something, you hear so many good things about yourself and you feel good about yourself you can choose something you can on your own do it and then if it's something you need help with you have people's attention it's an experience separate from being lonely and detached then once you have it you keep it because you want to justify the buying jill you have a comment but but how about when we get back okay you share that don't forget that you're listening to new life live and we're very happy that you are and i'll ask you to pray for jane pray for courage and wisdom and insight that's what jane needs and we want to help her not have to be a hoarder to have hope and healing not have to have stuff 
to feel comfort. That's what we're going for here. We'll be back. It had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images, and traffic to online porn sites has skyrocketed. Some say that's no big deal, it's just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. After I found the pornography on the internet, I said you either get help or I have to leave this household. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle workshop. He said, I think this is something that every man should go to. Married, dating, it was definitely life-changing. The Every Man's Battle workshop is being held online as a one-day event Saturday, February 4th. Don't wait for him to call. To find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. Every Man's Battle was a life-changing experience for me and a marriage-saving experience for me. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of the One Year Bible for Men or the One Year Bible for Women. These Bibles combine the best-selling daily Bible reading format with two-minute daily devotionals written to create a one-of-a-kind devotional Bible that you'll love. There are also ongoing benefits like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, and we hope that this is a safe place full of wisdom. And the wisdom has a foundation of truth. And the people that are on this program are great believers and have great knowledge of the Bible. Jill, you had a comment you wanted to make. We really want to help you, Jane. We really do. Right. So I, I was just going off of what you were talking about with the, sh the shopping, right? And, and there's a distinction between people that save things that have memories attached versus being more of a shopaholic. And, and the shopping addiction, even if it's online, it gives you a sense of power and it's a dopamine hit and it's a mood elevator. So it's, and it's the hope that this new thing somehow is going to add to our life and change our lives and make us feel better. And so then you keep doing more and more and more because you can, but you're not getting to the feelings. All of that yeah. takes you away from your feelings. And it's always amazing to me how many people who are hoarders are not really in touch with their feelings. True. Hey, Jane, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Did were your parents uh, overbearing and, and restrictive? Just curious about that, what they were like. Jane? Say that in fact. Hello? Yeah, Jane, were Can your you parents, yeah, Jane, were your parents yeah, I, always telling you no or don't? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. My parents were older. I was a change of life baby. My my siblings are all a year or two apart. Um, okay. I had a strange and unique, weird childhood. I had a lot of illnesses and walking issues, and hmm. you know, my life was probably nothing like the life of a typical kid. Yeah. I had four siblings, but I was more of an only child because they were all out of the house. And right. You well, know, Jim, let, let me ask Jim if he has hmm. some insight, and Jill, any other things that she wants to say. Um, anything you're thinking here, Jim? Well, um, just real brief, because I think they've handled it, handled a lot of the conversation so well. But I do think, um, Jane, that you have to look at hoarding just like some people look at depression or some people look at some other kind of an issue. There is help. There is therapy to do this. What I'm really impressed with you is that you were willing to go to social services and you've been a part of this group. 
they're going to have some answers for you, and you'll have to now learn to figure out how to do that. Sometimes it's medication, but other times it's ju- it's working on things like getting in touch with your feelings on why you do that. But I would lean into that group maybe even more than you're you've been leaning into it because there is an answer. I mean, and and honestly, there's a there's an answer. Most issues there are some answers, but to do it, sometimes you gotta you gotta dig deeper. And I would suggest that you you dig uh, deeper with that with that group as long as long as that's uh, you know, available to you. And, um, you know. and and Jane, I would not get hung up on what you call it. You started the conversation mm-hmm. by saying, is, is it sin? Because you're going down an intellectual kind of rabbit trail, and that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it. Call it sin. Call it a disorder, right? Nonetheless, dealing with it is the same. And when you go down those those bunny trails, you go away from the problem and you're going into your head and you're not dealing with the feelings and the, the pain of it for you, right? There's a pain as a result of all of this and there's a pain that you have buried in all of the stuff. I call it a problem. And if you just call it a problem, then... You don't have to worry about any of the other labels. It's just a problem to be dealt mm-hmm. with and to be solved. Speaking of uh, problems and the ability to solve <laughs> problems, uh, I meant uh, Larry Sonnenberg is right here with us. Larry, what do you have for us today? You're one of the great problem solvers in life. Well, thank you for that. Um, I wish there weren't so many problems, but at least that's called, uh, what do you call it, uh, job security. Job security, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Go. Well, it's uh, Saturday, Emotional Freedom, and so you have today and tomorrow to sign up, folks. Uh, I want to share with you what a man um, wrote after he was there. I've learned that we're not meant to isolate ourselves because God created us to be connected to him and others. The unhealthy strategies I've developed to avoid pain just kept me stuck. Trusting God and others builds character and brings wholeness. It's time to face reality instead of faking that all is well. Hmm. I believe this weekend is the first step of a journey into a new life. I love that. So new life is in store for you folks, too. Man or woman, doesn't matter. Whatever issue you're dealing with, this is kind of a catch-all for us. Single, married, whatever. Uh, Come come and get some help. Uh, The group time is incredibly special, so don't want you to... Be surprised by that, although I know one lady, she now serves on our board of directors, and her brother went to a workshop, had a great experience here, and told her she had to go to this too. She came, and she went. She ended up in the group time. She said, had you told me there was group time there, I never would have come. Mm-hmm. So forget the group time. I'm not telling you anything about the group time. Uh, you've just eliminated 30% uh, that, of the people that would have called, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> no, really, it is so special and if you don't like groups, well, this is the way to be in one, in, in the virtual group. And it's amazing what we've discovered is that sometimes people that wouldn't normally share some things in a face-to-face group will open up in a virtual online and group. What pe- else do you pe- have, Larry? Well, people that say they don't like the groups never experience anything like these groups. Yeah. So yeah. you can't really say. So, folks, um, I just want to encourage you. We, we are always looking for support because we believe in what we do. We see God's hand touching it and doing things, and I feel like a broken record. I wish I had a better better thing to say, a better spiel. But God loves what we do. He's helping people, and we need you to help us to help them. Yep, and we've been doing it for almost 35 years now, and we're finding new and better ways to do it. So come join us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We want to help. Thank you, Larry. 1-800-NEW-LIFE to help us or for us to help you either way, give us a call. Let's go to Lacey. Lacey is calling all the way from Louisville, Kentucky, and we're, we're glad that she is. Hi, Lacey. How are you? Hi, I'm well. How are you? Excellent. What is going on in your life and how could we help you? Well, um, I met someone, and we have a very good relationship. It looks like we have a strong possibility of getting married one day. Um, Probably one of our first 
maybe the first or second conversation, this individual revealed to me that he had an STD that he had acquired in his youth. Mm -hmm. So um, as time goes on, I, I'm, this is just so new for me. I don't really know what questions to ask him or how to be best prepared in the event that we do get married, how, how our intimacy would be. This is just so foreign for me. Okay. Um, is he saying that you would not be able to be physically intimate if you got married or what? <laughs> no, he's not saying that. I, he, I mean, it's just a possibility that, I mean, if, a, if there's an STD mm -hmm. that I could contract it, I, I just don't know how to really gear a conversation with him, what I need to ask, what I need to know, and how to just be better prepared. I mean, I know yeah. I've been educating myself, but I, it's, I, I just, I don't know. I just never thought I'd be in a situation like yeah. that. I, okay. Because I really have strong feelings for him. I really feel like we will end up married, but the, if, if it's a big choice to make. Just knowing mm -hmm. that, that there's always that possibility that you can be exposed. Yeah. Okay. So, well, Jill, Lacey, go ahead. I, I think you're yeah. asking good questions. Um, researching mm -hmm. it is good. I think I would also um, ask your doctor, mm -hmm. right? Start with your doctor, um, confide in them, and ask them to give you information. Ask him okay. what he knows about it, right? Okay. Um, my mm -hmm. understanding is that usually they are on medication. And yeah. when there's a breakout, you have to refrain mm -hmm. from sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, but when it's dormant, um, it's okay, depending on the type of STD it is. So that's okay. all things that are important to find out and to ask all those questions and to ask him what are his thoughts about sexual intimacy, given that he has this, right? And, and what has and when, he learned? Yeah. When we come back, we'll talk about the good news in a story like this. You're listening to New Life Live. We're very glad that you are. If we can help, we want to. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have some great workshops coming up here. Every Man's Battle, February the 4th, is online. I'll be there. Intimacy and Marriage, February the 17th. Restore. For anyone that's been hurt by a man with sexual integrity problems, that's February 24th. Lose It for Life. Once a year, we do weight loss, lose it for life, March 18th. Courageous Parenting with Dr. Jim Burns, April 1st. We'll be back after this. my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit its addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries. We know that Christian counseling changes lives. We hear evidence of that every day. My relationships with my husband, with my friends, with my family are much richer and deeper and honest. Particularly my relationship with God, I see Him in a more accurate form and begin to trust Him more. There's joy and there's peace because I have the internal tools that I can trust. So it's radically changed my life. I'm just not even the same person. Our nationwide network of licensed Christian counselors means there is help available near you. Take the leap, jump in, and go for it. It's changed my life completely. You don't have to be stuck where you are, but you can't really expect to change unless you take action. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
it could be the start of a whole new life for you. Christian Counseling works, and we can help. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE today. Someone who cares is always there at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Hardiman here, and uh, just want to mention that um, the good news that I promised was that, Lacey, he, he's telling you about this, yeah. and sometimes we'll get a call and the person has this, STD, and they don't tell mm -hmm. the person until they're married right. and it's really right. sad so he he is doing something right here and you know about it and that's a very very good thing now is this uh, is he a, a believer and does he have he says yeah. this is from his youth and has good values yeah. and things mm -hmm. oh, yeah that's good to hear Everything that's else. great he's checking off all of the boxes I, that, I mean i'm not really i would say that's the only thing i'm concerned about but it's it's not. It's more so. I just don't know how to navigate that. Everything else lines up. Good. Good. Hey, here's more well, good news, Lacey. Yeah. Um, today, after you hang up with us, call your OBGYN. Your OBGYN is probably okay. going to give you some really good news. Jill okay. gave you some of it, okay. but part of it is you just don't have the information. And today, in today's world, there is um, there are just. I mean, it's at epidemic stages for one thing. But the truth is, is that. Um, that, that shouldn't delay a, a marriage issue. I do want to say this. You know, new research mm -hmm. is showing. I wrote a book called Getting Ready for Marriage, and it's a premarital uh, book and workbook. And in that, okay. the first thing I say is, uh, and I'm actually quoting a, a study done by the state of Oklahoma, but there is a 31% better chance that people will stay married if they get premarital counseling. Isn't that interesting? Right. And, you know, there's not something magic in the counseling. It's that, like you said, they're checking off the boxes, things like that. So why that's such an incredible uh, statement is because uh, you want to make sure that you and him do that. Now, again, you've already started that process. And even sometimes before you get engaged, you know, if you're seriously dating, sometimes the best thing you can do is go get some counseling or, or you know, at least, you know, read a book together on it, you know, take a class, do whatever. Churches oftentimes have, have some that are yeah. great. And, you know, here's something that I do not have any research to back up, but I think you improve your chances when you tell the person doing premarital, hey, we're not here just to find out how to have the best marriage. If right. you sense find that we're not problem. right for each yeah. other or mm -hmm. this isn't mm -hmm. the right time, you have mm -hmm. the liberty to say that to us. We will not be offended. Mm -hmm. That That opens... Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. up some things mm -hmm. and um so anyway i always love to give people that kind of advice mm -hmm. i wish you guys could go to our how we love a as an engaged couple and it would just give you information you would be so grateful for i would ask you to talk with him about that when you're mm -hmm. engaged we ask people to stay in separate rooms of course but anyway oh my goodness mm -hmm. what a gift it is to yourself um, I, mm -hmm. I just don't know of anything mm -hmm. that could be more valuable than that. So I hope you'll okay. join us. Great. Thank you Great. so much. Uh, boy, my call screener doesn't work. I'm trying to get over here and talk to Heather, our final caller. Don't have a lot of time, but I can't get to Heather because I, I can't seem to click that button. There we go. Here comes Heather. All right. Heather, Boston, Massachusetts. Listens online. How Hi, are you, thank Heather? You. Yeah. What's Good, going on? How are you? Excellent. Um, yeah. I'm doing Bible study with my family, particularly my 18-year-old son, and he had some questions. I wanted to get him the right answers. Um, okay. Basically, if we are descendants from Noah's Ark, was, um, was procreation a sin at that point in that particular circumstance? And aren't we all descendants of Jewish descent from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And he was particularly interested in the heredity lines of Jewish versus non-Jewish. Okay, so um, we are, I mean, being from uh, Abraham, we have that Jewish blood in us, and when you get down to it, when God said he was going to save one family, he saved Noah and his family. 
Right. Jim, you have some thoughts here? You, you've got a bit of a, an anticipatory grin uh-huh. yeah. on your face. No, I love that. You know, my background in youth ministry said that's the questions we always got. And we'd kind of sometimes go, we have no idea, but we're going to, we're, you know, we're going <laughs> to seek and find out. I suggest, Heather, that you and your son get together with your pastor and uh, and throw some of those out and and have some dialogue because oh, again, that'll be a good thing because what's beautiful about that what i love you're one you're doing bible study with your family mm-hmm. that's amazing in fact uh, there's about a 300% better chance that kids will stay in the church if there are faith conversations in the family. That's a new study by Barna and another uh, gentleman named Richard Ross. Amazing. So you're doing it. Way to go. Now you take it a step further. Don't feel like you have to answer. What you're doing is calling us, and that's and that's great. Now, again, none of the three of us are you know theologians, um, but the truth of the matter is, is that your pastor may not have an exact idea on everything um, that he's going to ask. But give what at 18, you want your son to have a safe place where your son can ask questions and and not get just rote answers. And, and really, truly, one of the mm-hmm. best things he, you can do is invite him into a relationship with someone. It could be your pastor. It could be the youth pastor. It could be you know somebody else in the church or whatever. But when you give him the experience the opportunity and the experience of asking questions that are the hard ones. You know, what about the pygmies? What about this and yeah. that? You know, all the questions out there. Well, the beauty is, was we don't have an answer for everything, but what that show, people who don't have an answer for everything also have a complicated and beautiful faith because it actually means I believe and I don't have all the answers. And so right. you're really helping him big time by having that question. But don't feel like you have to say, you know, check every everyone off the box and go, okay, this is this is the uh, the Noah story. This is the uh, Jewish story. This is yeah. I mean, what Steve said is right, and those are those are overall. But he may even want to dig more. Do that well, with somebody and, close. To well, you. and 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 to say I don't know, but let's find out together. Exactly. Let's do a little research. Yeah. I, I know that when I'm in Bible study, when some odd question comes up, yeah. somebody volunteers to research it, exactly. or we dig in and we go, let's look and find yeah. it. And you know, Heather well, gets the new life uh, sticker oh, for me. Oh yeah. The reason yeah. is because she's doing this with her son who's I know. 18. That's what so a great. and it's, even on the level the that dream. are 18. Your 18-year-old wants to do that yes. with you. It's and then amazing. he's asking these kinds so, of questions. Yeah. I'm going to send you uh, every woman's, I mean, the uh, one-year Bible for women, and I'll send for him one-year Bible for men, and I'll send him every man's Bible. Um, my wife got some questions online about her saying that um, Jesus was a descendant of Lot. <laughs> and, you know, when you think about that, who's even thinking about that? But in reality, Abraham's nephew was Lot, and through Lot, we have Ruth, who was then married from the descendant of Abraham, Boaz. So there, there, uh, she was able to say, you know, because she researches everything she writes. But it's just an interesting thought that we're descendants of Lot and Abraham both. Anyway, um, 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you need some help. We have... Bibles that people have used. Four million life recovery Bibles have sold. And what a great gift to somebody if you know that, well, maybe they're in recovery. It's a great gift. Every believer's thought life is what we're giving away right now for a gift of any amount. We will send you every believer's thought life. It is a great tool for getting rid of those patterns and those things that trip us up so often. And let me remind you of that scripture we started with in James 1.5. If any person lacks wisdom, ask God, and he gives generously to all without finding fault, it will be given to you. Wisdom comes from experience where we've applied God's word. It even comes from experiences when we did the opposite. We learned from it. And, uh, you know, some people... Uh, learn from others' mistakes. Others are committed to be the others. And that's really sad. You don't have to be. We'll see you next time. If you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Come join us at one of these workshops that are life-changing. Thank you, Jim and Jill. See you next time. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.